Welcome back. So this is the demonstration on how to take your pinch pot cup that we previously made, which has become leather hard, and how to clean it up and how to transform it into a pinch pot cup with a handle and perhaps a foot ring. So the last video I showed you how to create the pinch pot form. Now I turned it uh, upside down, left it uncovered overnight in the class cabinet, and it is leather hard. This needs a lot of cleaning. You will see that the rim does not look even. I had it sitting on there so it kind of squished the rim. It's thick in areas and thin in areas, and it looks a little messy on the outside. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and level the upper edge. I'd like to get that upper edge level so when I flip it, it's not going to be uh, kind of a nuisance to uh, try to deal with. Now, one of the things that I usually do when I go to level something is I usually will hold a needle tool or uh, some sort of a tool that I can mark with up against my body and then I will use a turntable with the piece right on it and I rotate it. So if I try to keep that tool level and then I rotate the uh, pot, it helps it to get it somewhat level. Now if I get my eyes down and look straight across it, I can see a little bit better. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim the pot just short of where I put that line. So in other words, uh, just above the line, I'm going to trim down to that. Okay, now this is leather hard clay. Uh, for leather hard chunks of clay, for my students, when we uh, put things like that in the pug mill, I only put full loads of leather hard things in there together. Uh, so if you have leather hard clay that you need to pug, um, check with me before you put it in the pug mill. Unless I have a full load, I might tell you to put it in the slip bucket. Other than that, we only put plastic clay in there on a daily basis that I can just repug with a little bit of water. Now what I'm doing is I'm just coming along in here with my knife, leveling this off a little bit more precisely. Again, if I get my eyes down level with the top of the pot, I can look straight across and I can easily see where the high and low points are. Okay. Now, once I've done most of the preliminary things with the knife, then I'm going to switch to a SureForm tool. The SureForm tool is like a cheese grater. Um, these are bent end to end, and they are designed to cut from one direction. So if you're trying the SureForm tool and it's not working, you might be pulling it in the wrong direction. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking the SureForm tool with my eyes at the level of the pot, I'm looking for any high or low spot, and I am just attempting to level this as best as I possibly can. And I do this really by eye. I'm asking myself, what's high, what's low, and let's make it all look the same. There we go. Okay. Now with the edge a bit more level, now I really need to address the thickness. This is obviously way too thick. For a cup, when you look at this edge com in comparison, you can see what we need to do. We need to take off a lot of thickness. So one of the first things that I do is I will take the sh same SureForm tool and I'm going to come around on the outside and I'm going to first of all make sure that this pot actually looks round. If you have areas where it doesn't look round, maybe it's really thick in one spot, you need to take that down a little bit. You need to make it look a little bit more uniform. So a lot of this I'm going to do from the outside. You can see that I'm getting off a lot of thickness. This is one reason that I had you uh, do it about 3 eighths of an inch or half an inch thick. When you have a little bit more thickness like this, it's easier to take it off without worrying about going right through the wall. Okay. Now the outside is looking pretty good, pretty uniform. Now what I really want to do is I want to think about the inside. So the inside of the edge, it's going to be almost impossible to get one of these sure forms in there because they are bent going in a weird direction to fit it in. But what I can use is I can use a sure form that is bent side to side rather than end to end. So this curved sure form will allow me to get in there and as I use this 
I don't just pull straight up and down. I pull at a diagonal because when you are pulling it diagonally, you're keeping that blade moving in a nice diagonal direction, and you usually don't gouge it as much. If you just go straight up and down, it might be more prone to gouging. So I'm just going to come in here and do the edge and a little bit underneath the edge. That looks remarkably better already. It's looking much closer to like the thickness of a drinking cup edge. Okay. Um, before I do any more major cleaning, I'm just going to take the sure form and I'm going to finish off the outside. I had already started the upper part of the outside. Now I'm going to finish off the lower part. Remember in the previous video we talked about how you really want to make sure that the bottom stays round and the bottom is centered in the middle of the cup. If your bottom is off center it's going to look a little awkward or strange. So as you're sure forming you want to just concentrate on that. Keep it round, keep it in the middle. Now that I have uh, sure formed it and I've made it a little bit more even, now I'm going to take a stainless steel rib and I'm going to scrape away some of the sure form marks. You can do this with a yellow rib too, but the uh, stainless steel one will kind of make quick work of getting rid of those marks, and then I'll move to the yellow. So I'm going to take a few minutes, and you can see how I'm cleaning this. One of the things that I like to do is I like to alternate my directions. So if I go up and down, the next pass will probably be side to side. And then maybe after that, I might go diagonal. So if you alternate your directions, it will help you to get rid of ridges. Okay, now that I've done some of the uh, stainless steel scraper, I'm going to move on to the yellow rib. And the yellow rib will help take care of smoothing it even more. It'll take rid of uh, the little lines and things that I might have had. And then I can also do that up here on the rim. Okay, now that I have the outside looking pretty good, now I need to address the inside. The inside, of course, is a little bit harder because it's really not possible to get all the way down in there with the curved areas with a sure form. So that has to be pretty much done with the stainless steel rib and as, as a scraper. The more smooth you get it on the first day, the easier the second day is. So if it's a little bit messy, like mine is messy, it's going to take a little bit more work. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scrape using the rounded side of the rib, trying to get a nice, smooth, rounded interior that does not have a bunch of divots or dents in it. And this will take me a few minutes. So I'll let you see how I do this, and I'll come back and show you what, what to do after I get it somewhat smooth. Okay, 
So now I have smoothed it considerably more with the uh, rib on the inside. I've scraped it away a little bit. Uh, one of the key things that you need to realize is when you're using a rib like this is you have to watch the angle at which you put it on the clay. At that moment of contact, if you go in at a 90 degree angle, you're going to make a big dent or a gouge like that. So you have to make sure that it's uh, less of an angle so it's a very shallow angle that you're holding it at when you initially put it in there to try to lessen the, the gouging and the, the lines that you might create. So once I have it scraped, I will then follow it up again with the yellow rib. And then the last thing that I really need to address with the, uh, the outside here um, or the top part, I really need to address the upper rim because that upper rim should be smooth it should be rounded and it should be comfortable and clean um, to be able to put your mouth on so you can drink out of it. So as we look at it here, it certainly doesn't look uh, clean or smooth, but it is level at least. Now if it's relatively even in thickness, which it is right now, then I can move on to the next step. If it has still had thick areas and thin areas, I would go ahead and sure form it and get it even. But what I'm going to do next is I'm going to use a little notched rib. I just have some plastic cards that I have kept and I have created notches of various sizes. It works great to um, sculpt an edge to get an exact diameter that you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my card and I'm going to just slide that notch over the side and with several passes I will eventually round it nicely and I'm going to get down to the level of my edge. I want to do it so it looks absolutely round so I just don't have a flat spot anymore. So as I do this slowly, after several passes, I'll be bringing it down until I'm at the right diameter. That looks a little soft right now, your edge should be leather hard when you're doing this. If your edge is very, very soft, you will certainly gouge it. And if your edge is very, very dry, you could easily break it or chip it. Now, you have to really watch your edge and make sure that you're keeping it round as you're doing something like this. Now, that looks remarkably better with a nice rounded edge. But if you look at the outside now, you can see that I have created a little line because it was a little bit thick underneath there. So I'm going to come back in here and get rid of that line. Okay. Now, I need to check my rim again. If for any reason my rim looks wavy, like right here, it did not quite do what I wanted it to do. So I do need to do a little bit of a correction in a few spots. Does not look as even as I was hoping. So it takes a few times to get it right sometimes. It's okay. There we go. Okay. All right, we're going to try that again. Okay, my edge looks considerably better. It looks a little bit more even, a little bit more flat. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my red rib and I'm just going to go over parts that I haven't smoothed. The red rib does pretty much the very, very final smoothing. And you really want your cup to be nice and clean prior to putting on your handle, uh, prior to putting on a foot ring, and definitely prior to putting on your texture. Remember to always clean off your rib as you are doing it and it will help it to stay nice and clean for you.
Okay, the cup looks nice and clean, and there's one last thing that I'm gonna do. Um, and I like to do this, uh, especially if you don't have a foot ring. You can see that this cup is a little wobbly. You can see how it wiggles. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it, and I'm going to create a slight indentation on the bottom so it actually has the start of a foot ring. I can still add on a coil for a foot ring, but I'm gonna go ahead and start this. Just gonna create a slight indentation. It's not gonna be very deep, but that's gonna permit it to sit more on the outer part of the foot rather than uh, an inside part where maybe it would be uh, slightly domed and uh, force it to rock. And then, of course, I can clean that, smooth that out with my rib, just like I've done everything else. Now it won't rock. It's much better. Okay, so to end the second day of working on my pinch pot, <clears throat> I will have cleaned the outside, I will have leveled it, and I will have smoothed, smoothed that rim so it has a nice, thin, drinkable edge. Um, you might want to put a, a slight indentation so you create a little bit of a foot ring. And then this is all you're going to accomplish on the second day. Now, the next thing that I'm going to be showing you is I will show you how to create um, a handle and a foot ring, but we're not going to finish that today. What we're going to do instead is we would cover this up very, very tightly, wrap it up tightly in a bag. You can place it back on your board and you would wrap them both up tightly, of course, and then uh, put it in your cabinet. And then tomorrow it should be the same moisture when we get it out so we can work on our handles and our foot rings. And that's day two on working on your pinch pot.